Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition with this week of weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, D.T., from Weather Risk, or Captain of Chaos, or Colonel of Confusion, your command of catastrophe. Let's talk about this week in weather. And uh, lots to talk about here, so let's get right to it. First, this here, of course, is the website. And uh, over here, you can see different products that we sell it to our different subscribers. One of them, of course, is the three-week newsletter, which you can get down here and also buy through the shop page over here. And it's the newsletter comes out every Monday and uh, covers the next three weeks. And we also offer this some forecast products for agricultural concerns. And, of course, as always, the uh, Mid-Atlantic forecast, which is this product right here, $35 a month. And you get all this information, uh, Mid-Atlantic broken up into 12 zones in the next seven days, plus week two and some maps and a nice discussion, all for 35 bucks a month. And this is really good for uh, people who have outdoor concerns, whether it's your own garden or for weddings or uh, doing some uh, house uh, painting. Some of my vineyard clients use this. Uh, other far farm clients I have use it as well, house painters. It's uh, all around useful product, and it's only 35 bucks a month. And then, of course, this here is the uh, Weather Risk Grains Twitter page, you can see, which has been going on for several years. And this one is the operational forecast for Blue Sky, which is the Mid-Atlantic here. Not This is, I use the Blue Sky platform for just regular weather, not having to do with the um, um, my agricultural concerns. This is mostly for the Mid-Atlantic region, the operational weather. Okay. Let's get started on this, and we'll sh I'll talk about here the Atlantic temperatures. This is as of May 21. And again, if you compare May 21 of this year to 24, May of 2024, you'll notice that the Atlantic here, the eastern and tropical Atlantic, was much, much warm. The temperatures were extremely warm, as much as the red color here, way above normal. But now, as you can see, we have a lot of uh, slightly below normal water temperatures off the coast of Africa and the eastern Atlantic and the subtropical regions. Now, the Southwest Atlantic is on the warm side, and so is the Gulf of Mexico and the Western Caribbean. But most of the tropical and subtropical Atlantic is, is cold to the normal. And this is very different, like I mentioned, from the last several seasons. Meanwhile, to the north, in the Northeast Atlantic, they have record warm, warm uh, sea surface temperatures here. Now, this has been creating a strong ridge in the jet stream in a blocking pattern, which has kept Northwest Europe, France, Great Britain, Germany, um, uh, the Southern Scandinavian countries much, much drier than normal. And they're having a drought there. I mean, they've had it for most of April and May. And this, what this warm water is doing is creating a constant blocking ridge of high pressure. And, and that's, of course, preventing the rain. But it's also impacting the cold water here in the subtropical Atlantic and the far eastern Atlantic. Let me show you what I mean. These are the surface maps here. Now, this is May 14th, May 18th, and May uh, 21. And notice you see the high pressure here, over here to the north, and this subtropical ridge developing. And then you're getting north winds here constantly with this. And that's pulling on the cold water from Great Britain and the North Sea and Iceland and Ireland to off the coast of France down the west coast of Africa into the subtropical Atlantic. And you can see that here. Look at this strong, I guess this is counted as the early version of the, the Bermuda High. It's way far to the east, and you're getting a strong northeast wind pulling down the cold water from England and France and Spain to down towards the Azores and then to the Cape Verde Islands. And that's producing this kind of colder than normal sea surface temperatures. So now this could change at any time. I mean, if this pattern shifts here and it changes, these sea surface temperatures in the subtropical Atlantic could warm up in 10 days, going back to normal, even above normal. But And of course, remember, the main hurricane season is August, September, and October. So we have plenty of time to change. But right now, it definitely it's colder than it's been for the last several uh, seasons in May, going into the hurricane season on June 1st, than we've seen the last several years. All right, so let's keep that in mind. All right, so this here is our current upper air map from May 22nd. And the temperatures, as you can see, there's been quite a bit of temperature contrast, well below normal, the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, New England, around a slightly above normal degree or two, uh, Virginia, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, and then warmer than normal along the Gulf Coast states. Now, this is the upper air map as of May 22nd here today. You have this huge blocking pattern in central. It was in northeast Canada. It has retrograded now into central Canada here, stretching from Manitoba and Saskatchewan all the way up towards Baffin Island. 
And we have this huge upper trough and upper low bringing the cold air in. And it's going to get even colder than this. So the, the next several days, we're going to have some very chilly, I would have to say cold, yes, cold readings on Friday morning, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, and Monday morning throughout the Midwest, uh, the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, the Mid-Atlantic, and New England. Quite impressive, these temperatures. Now, the rainfall in the past seven days, um, it's been okay. You can see the best rains have clearly fallen west of the Appalachian Mountains, and this has been the case for a while. Kentucky got slammed, Tennessee got good rain, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Illinois, lesser degree, Indiana. And then, of course, also some rain in northwest Pennsylvania. But look at the spottiness of the rain here in a lot of areas. And the, oops, let me change that. The spottiness in the rain here is quite uh, pronounced in some areas. Let me get, pull up my marker here. And I can't bring it over here. You can see. Again, not some gaps in the coverage here in the southeastern states on the Gulf Coast. So the best rains have definitely been west of the Appalachian Mountains in the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. But there's been some, some bands of moderate rain in Virginia and Pennsylvania, Maryland, upstate New York. Uh, now, of course, coastal New England. Now, we're going to have a coastal storm this weekend. Uh, so that's going to change things a little bit for New England. And this is the anomaly is to show you where the anomalies were. <coughs> Excuse me. As you can see, the deep south, the Gulf Coast states, it's been dry than normal. But if you look at the rainfall map from 30 days ago, two weeks ago, the Gulf Coast has seen a lot of rain. So having a slightly drier than normal week in southern Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, Georgia, the Carolinas, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's actually pretty good. Now, the MJO for the next 30 days, we are seeing a little bit of movement finally waking up a little bit here. And notice here that the models are showing um, this here is the European, the GFS, and the CFS getting a little movement into phase four in the next five days. That's below normal temperatures in the eastern U.S. and a pretty dry pattern as well. And then maybe some movement in June, uh, in mid or late June, into phase six, which is also a which might indicate some more uh, rain for the East Coast, but we'll see. Uh, most of the time it's in the neutral circle, but we are beginning to see a little bit of movement. So maybe that's the start of something here. Okay, let's talk about the operational maps here. This is uh, May 24, 23, 24. There's a gigantic upper low. Let me blow this up so you can see this a little bit. Uh, bring that uh, front. There you go. And you can see it's a very big system here. Um, a giant upper low. It's just dominating the... Uh, the eastern, you know, eastern half of the country. Uh, here's the huge block right here. Um, so again, this is up in Greenland. It's retrograding. The block is moving backwards. And here's our next trough coming in. And there's another one coming in behind it. So these systems are dropping down from the Gulf of Alaska into California, then crossing the country in almost a due west-east direction, which is why it's been pretty wet and stormy for most of the country. Uh, and this giant upper low pulling down the cold air. You're getting high pressure here underneath the block and the low in southeast Canada. That's producing strong north winds pulling down the cold air. Let's take a look. So this here is a service map for um, May 23rd, 24. The low is in New England. Here's the high coming down from the north. And there's our next system already developing coming out of the Rockies. This is May 24. Again, the low is in Maine. We're still getting occasional showers in uh, Mountains of New York, Pennsylvania, New York, uh, upstate New England, maybe even the eastern Great Lakes, a couple of showers here. And then the southern low here, uh, staying to the south, the rain spreading across to oh, Arkansas and western Tennessee. But, you know, Virginia, North Carolina still looks pretty dry, a lot of sun here. And then the upper Midwest, Ohio Valley looks really great. But this high pressure is a lot of chilly temperatures. All right, so this now here is May 25, 26. Now, the upper low, which was um, uh, over New England, is now pushing to southeast Canada. And here comes our next trough coming in this way. Okay, so a piece of energy here. I don't know if I can blow this up a little bit. Let me see if I can do that here. Yeah, so um, this, see this little bend right here? This, flank, this piece of energy is breaking away from the upper low, and it's going to meet up with this trough. These two features right here and this trough right here in this trough. They're going to merge and into a nice storm uh, for the southern uh, half of the country here on Memorial Day. And you can see it already happening here. This is now Sunday. Steady rain, Kansas, southern Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky. Light rain moving in um, by the afternoon in southwest Virginia, maybe western North Carolina, maybe. It might hold off until uh, Sunday night, okay? 
And then, but to the north, look at this giant high keeping everybody sunny and dry. Very sharp cutoff here. You're in the clouds or you're in the sun. Clouds and rain or sun. Now, by the time we get to uh, Monday, Sunday night, you can see, look at the rain across the deep south. The dividing line here is Interstate 40. Okay, if you don't know where that is, look it up in Google Maps. Interstate 40 runs across North Carolina, Tennessee, into Arkansas. So there may be some rain in Southern Virginia, but Northern Virginia stays dry. The Ohio Valley looks great. The Great Lakes look great. New England looks pretty good. So everywhere looks great. Upper Plains, Upper Midwest looks pretty good as well. Let's look at these temperatures. Min temperatures for Friday, tomorrow morning, and Saturday. Look at these readings. Yeah, that's 30s in New England. Yeah, that's what that is. 30s in Wisconsin, Michigan, New England, upstate New York. A lot of 40s, maybe even some 30s in the Greenbrier Valley in eastern portions of West Virginia, if you can believe that, Western Maryland. All right, that's Friday morning. Look at the numbers on Saturday morning. Wow, that's pretty, that's cool temperatures. Look at these 30s in Wisconsin and Michigan, upstate New York. Mm -mm -mm. Very impressive. Okay, here is the min temperatures for Sunday and Monday. Whew. Now, again, notice on these maps, look at this, the Gulf Coast. See how much warmer it is in the 60s here. Again, Sunday, Monday, look at the Gulf Coast, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, South Carolina, Georgia. They don't see the cold air at all. Everything north of Interstate 40. Very impressive cool temperatures. Okay, for this time of year. I'm just saying you might want to enjoy this because once you get into June, you're not going to see readings like this again until next November. So I'll just point that out to you. Okay. <sighs> okay, so this here is May 27th now. And remember, we talked about that piece of energy breaking away and uh, uh, from the, uh, let me bring this front, uh, breaking away and um, from the upper low in New England. And there it is now. It begins to merge with energy coming in from the West Coast and the Southern Plains. Then you have a nice trough here. The high pressures on the Great Lakes, but this looks like a winter storm. If you look at this, this is December, January, February, and you're a snow lover, you'll be, you would be freaking out. You're going, yeah, look at this map. But it's not, it's a rainstorm. And for the deep south, this is now Tuesday morning. Okay, so the question is, does the rain get into Virginia uh, or Maryland or Delaware on Memorial Day? I don't think it does to a large degree. There may be some light sprinkles or showers, especially southern Virginia, on Memorial Day afternoon, evening, but I think most of Memorial Day looks dry. Not a lot of sun in Virginia, or Maryland, or Delaware, or West Virginia, but it won't, at least it does not look like it's gonna be ran, that rainy. I think it'll hold off until late in the day or Monday night, so we'll, we'll have to follow this closely. Meanwhile, New England looks great, Great Lake looks great, the Ohio Valley looks pretty good, so everywhere looks good. But the southern states, a lot of rain here on Monday, Memorial Day into Tuesday. Now, here's May 29th, 28th, I should say. And you can see there's the upper low still. Let me bring this forward again. Sorry about that. And there's the upper low right here um, in the upper Midwest. Okay, and there's your ridge across the southern states. So the low is tracking due west to east right over the top of the ridge. And there's the next piece of energy coming in from the west coast in the southwestern states. So again, this looks like a, a nice winter storm, if that's what this was in the middle of winter. Cold high in Minnesota, cold high uh, in eastern Ontario, cold air damming a little bit. Look at that, that uh, Tuesday, May 28th. Uh, excuse me, uh, May 27th, Tuesday, Wednesday, May 28th. There you go. Uh, a lot of rain here, potentially. A lot of rain coming. Now, if you break it up, okay, the one in the upper left, this is 72 hour rainfall ending as a Sunday evening, okay, May 29th. Excuse me, May uh, 25th. Sunday, May May 25. As you can see, there's no real rain here in Virginia yet. A couple of showers in the Carolinas. All the rain is still back here in central and western Tennessee, Missouri, Arkansas. So we have nice and dry conditions here. Now, New England still getting some rain showers, mostly on Friday to Saturday. Now, here is the 72 hour from Sunday, 7 p.m. to Wednesday, 7 p.m. And you can see more rain in Virginia. But again, all of it's really toward the south. D.C. gets a lot less rain than Richmond. Same thing, you know, western Maryland gets a lot less rain than Roanoke. But the rain in the deep south looks pretty significant here. And that has been the case for all of April and all of May. Some of these places in Tennessee and Arkansas and northern Mississippi, Alabama, have seen 12 to 20 inches of rain since April 1st. I mean, they've been getting blasted, some of them even more than that. 
very impressive rainfall here. And again, if we get a hurricane in the Atlantic, in the Gulf Coast, and, the, and it remains this dry in July and August, there's going to be disastrous flooding in the Deep South. I mean, really bad. Just pointing it out to folks. Okay. This is May 30th. Now, finally, we, the pattern begins to break loose, and we see the, the block, which was in Northeast Canada. I remember where the blocking was originally, way up in here, right? This is May 23rd. Now, time we get to here, um, the blocking is now uh, in the Rockies and moving towards Central Canada, towards the Canadian Rockies. There's a, still a deep trough on the East Coast, a nice cold front moving through with some rain showers here. This is May 29th, big high pressure coming in behind it. So more dry weather for the plains of the Midwest here behind this front. Okay, once this front clears the area, we're going to be getting a north flow of more cool air. Let me show you what I mean. Look at this. Now, the European is developing a closed upper low over Pennsylvania and Virginia. And that, if that happens, this may be, I'm a little skeptical it's going to develop this close to the coast. You can see the lows off the coast here and then out to sea. So um, it's possible this low might be closer to the coast on May 31, but I think it's going to be just offshore. But in the meantime, the block is now a ridge on the west coast. So it's gone all the way from Greenland on May 23rd and northeast Canada to the west coast by June 1st. And you can see now we're getting northwest flow. Look at these lines. Let me show you what I mean here. Okay. Look at these flow lines coming from Alaska straight down through the Dakotas, down into the Midwest, down into Georgia. That's pretty cold air. It's pretty chilly air for this time of year. Okay, so you're expecting a big warm-up in early June. That's not happening. Not happening, right? The European Ensemble supports this idea. That's a pretty big trough on the East Coast, folks. That is a really big trough. Now, once this trough gets out of the way, okay, once this trough goes out to sea, this ridge will build in, and then after, let's say, June 5, 6, or 7, it should turn substantially warmer in the eastern U.S., east of the Mississippi River. It should. All right, so that's the good news if you want warm weather. But we're not done yet because the European operationally has another piece of energy dropping down. Let me blow this up so you can see it. Okay, out of central Canada into the Midwest. Oh, geez, nice original West Coast. Again, this looks like a cold air outbreak. This looks like winter. This does not look like early June. It just doesn't. Okay, and that's going to have low pressure and a cold front, and it's going to be more chilly air because you're getting your air. Look at the air. Look at the flow straight out of northwest Canada. Wham! Right down into the eastern United States and Virginia and Tennessee and North Carolina and Georgia. Very impressive. Very, very impressive here. But this is a dry pattern. Again, you can see very dry conditions for the plains, the upper Midwest. Nice cold front here of the warming ahead of this trough there'll be some warming on june 1st or 2nd and the cold front comes through and temperatures turn cool again in the extended forecast finally the pattern begins to shift june 4 june 5 june 6 this is not a warm pattern by any stretch of the imagination but at least we no longer have a deep trough on the east coast we no longer have this massive amount of blocking in northeastern canada so this is a very typical early june pattern here warming temperatures occasional rain not much somewhat drier than it has been, um, and a return to normal-like jet stream patterns by June 5, by June 6, by June 7. All right, that's the presentation. This is a meteorologist, the DT from Weather Risk. I will see you over on the Weather Risk Facebook page, the Weather Risk um, Blue Sky page, and then over on the website.